Welcome to the Wildcast Podcast, coming to you from Wildcast Studios with your hosts, Adam Lund and Jeremy Boucher. Welcome back to Wildcast Christmas Studios for another episode of the Wildcast Podcast, your unofficial voice for all things Moncton Wildcats. As always, fan listeners, I am Elf and host Adam, and I am joined by your favorite Elf and co-hoster, Mr. Jeremy Boucher. Are you done all your Christmas shopping now? I still have eight hundred and fifty dollars <laughs> left. Left to go. Yeah. Wow. That's yeah. So that will. Be, I can't. Uh, w- is that for? That's a combination. Like what's our limit? Eight twenty or? Like you and me. Like what's? It, what? What's your limit spend on me for? Oh, uh, like eight twenty. Give, give you your. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> The amount of time I've spent in this studio for the past six years has <laughs> yeah. been worth $820. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. No, I got you. But no, yeah. it looks, place looks really nice. Yeah. I like what you, you did. Thank you. Yeah. looks very festive. Yeah. It's You're the last in the Christmas kind of, spirit. Kind of the last thing I decorate. But I got into the Christmas spirit over the weekend. It takes a while. Mm-hmm. But when I get into it, it's all right. Put the tree up. Put the stuff up. Christmas movies. Uh, we watch four Christmases. Nice. Vince Vaughn, Reese Witherspoon. Yeah. It's not one of the top Christmas movies, but it's a very underrated mm-hmm. comedy Christmas movie wise. And then once I was done there, I was like, you know what I got to do? I got to get the studio ready. Yeah. Speaking of comedies. Yeah. I got a joke to start the show off. Oh, that's always appreciative. Yeah, not bad. Um, so I'm going to look down here. Why do Dasher and Dancer love coffee? Because they're Santa's Starbucks. <laughs> well done. My mom sent me that. That's awesome. You're gonna have. To, she's gonna have to send you a joke every week. I don't know. We got uh, three weeks of shows and three weeks of Mama Boucher jokes. Nice. Has <laughs> Avery got her uh, Santa letter back yet? Not yet. No. Still waiting. He's. Uh, it's very yeah. busy. Yeah. The big man must be. Uh, hand must be falling off there and. <laughs> Yeah, he's not uh, not up on the old um, interwebs yet. To no, no, he's her. probably still got that typewriter. He's an old guy, right? So he's yeah. probably still got his one one finger tip, tap, tap, tap. <laughs> I remember those things. Yeah, those I'm just glad you. Uh, I'm just glad you made it here. Uh, yes. we both fell mm-hmm. with the uh, as Derb says, down with the sickness. As yeah. Disturb says, down with the sickness. Um, it hit you um, a little bit harder than it hit me from from talking to you. I was just. I felt like I had COVID. Um, I was exhausted. I had a fever, migraine, the chills for, well, I was off Tuesday to Friday last week. Mm-hmm. Um, but, yeah, I mean, I didn't even go to the game Friday. Too sick to go to work. Too sick to go to hockey. And, I mean, I, talking to you, you obviously I talked to you right now, but talking to you before we started, it was like you were, it hit you. Yeah. Um, whatever's going around, it's, it's no joke. It's, um, I would tested myself for COVID every day. It was negative yeah. every day. And I was like, what the hell is this? And th- there's just so many viruses going around right now. And like, I was sick last week and then it felt better. And then it came back and I've still, I can tell it's still lingering in me. Like it's, it's but it's not as bad. Like I was, mm-hmm. you know, fever forty, um, body aches, chills, uh, you know, barely ate, lost like seven pounds in a week. Um, but yeah, I'm. <laughs> if there's any, I literally ate an entire pizza, you know, on on Friday, and that's when I started to start feeling better. And you know, I've I've started, you know, I've started to get, you know, some fluids back into me and some food back into me. But it hits, it hits hard. It was tough. A lot worse than COVID. Yeah, it's uh, it wasn't it wasn't fun. Uh, but I'm just glad you're healthy, and it's better that it hits now than in three weeks from now. When, yeah. especially because I need you for the next three weeks for the <laughs> for all our our double episodes on the week. So uh, again, if you didn't hear on the post game show, which is now back on Instagram, uh, the, the fan listeners voted back to be there. Um, we got two shows a week for the next three weeks. Uh, we got. Wednesday, and then tomorrow you hear our trade deadline episode. We had uh, Corey Arsenault from Islanders Hockey and uh, 
Jamie Tozer from Station Nation. Uh, and every Thursday we're going to have two from uh, the Maritime Division as they kind of break down the trade deadline for us um, with each team. And then we get into our mega Christmas episode, and then we're off over the Christmas holidays. So, as always, you can follow us on social media, Twitter, Moncton Wildcast, Instagram, Wildcast Podcast, and on TikTok, Wildcast, po- Wildcast Podcast, as well on the YouTube. Quick question comes in from friend of the show, Dave McKnight, the writer of the real CHL Top 10, but he calls it the CHL Power 12 that you can find weekly on his Twitter at McKnight underscore David. His question, is there a way to fix three-on-three three hockey? His his idea was kind of like basketball. You can't go over the red line. Um, I was trying to think of something better than that, and I think that is one of the better ideas. Or and even if you put that in, I would even say you get two chances to go over the line. If you carry the puck, you get two chances. If you do it a third time, it's a penalty. That'll end that four, four on three. That will that should end the the overtime, um, three on three overtime. I don't think you can go longer because ninety percent of the games are are boring. Mm-hmm. But the ten percent are those ones that are two on ones and breakaways and chance after chance. After, but ninety percent, you go ten minutes, teams are just gonna bring that out longer. I think maybe even four on four for five minutes and then three on three might change strategy. But I think I would go off Dave's idea of not allowing you to go over the red line. Like in basketball, um, you get two, two times to do it a third time, or you, you maybe you get one and a second time you get a penalty delay a game and that'll end four on three. That should end it. But yeah, it hasn't exactly been the most entertaining no, you know, overtimes uh, recently. It's it's people are stressing. You're stressing these puck possession things, puck possession, no yeah. turnovers, no. T- and you know, it's. But at the same time, I get his point. But Moncton's, I mean, they've been without OJ, who's like an OT specialist. Yeah. Because you know his speed and his skill is perfect for him in three on three. You know, they're they they're without loshing and and. We'll, we'll be without Loshing probably until the new year. You know, There's they have speed on the team, but they don't have speed and skill like those two. Mm-hmm. Uh, like, LaBelle has speed. He's got skill, but, you know, to... His, How dog-tired is he from being counted well, well, on for most it. of the game, right? Well, that's it. By the time you get in overtime, he's you know can barely catch his breath. And, yeah. uh, so I think it's, it's more that the Wildcats just don't have speed and skill in their lineup. You know, they, they've they obviously at the draft, they made a focus on being a bigger team. And so I just, they they lack that, the players that bring three-on-three three overtime to an excitement level. Yeah. And I think that's the problem right now. Like, they're they're banking on their, on their luck of, you know, maybe a, uh, the opposing team shooting the puck wide, which is going to cause, you know, a two on one the other way, you know, it's, they're, they're not putting their, they're not making their own luck. They're hoping to get luck. Uh And I think that's just what they got to do. I mean, rule changes. I mean, I'm not going to come out here and, and say what needs to be fixed about, about overtime because they fixed it from going from four on four to three on three. Like yeah. their their goal doing that was to end games sooner and to make it more exciting, and they did that with three on three. I just think it's a a team thing, or they just don't have. I don't want to say they don't have exciting players. They no, just but don't injuries have, are just building up right now. They just don't have enough yeah. exciting players in their lineup right now. Yeah, and I even think if you leave it the way it is, and you, uh, like because the World Cup is on right now, there's you look at the standings. If you go three points for a win and, you know, make overtime loss like one point or something, like make it make it a discrepancy, maybe teams will try to strive for that win early in overtime or in regulation instead of just like playing for the overtime because you know you're each going to get a point and there's just one point extra. If there's two points available for – two points extra for a win, teams might push a little bit more in three and three instead of getting to the blue line – and going, oh, we don't have numbers, so let's bring it back and try again. Like maybe mm. just go to a three point uh, for a win type thing, and, and maybe that's that's the way. But generally, when they find new things to do, coaches figure it out, and we get right back into mm-hmm. 
how do we fix this again? But I do like when you tweet, it's time for a skills competition. It is time for, that's, I don't, it's not a shootout. It's a skills competition. Yeah. And, you know, it's, we've had our luck. But in the case of s- Saturday, they just didn't really use their skilled players yeah. accordingly in their shootout lineup. And I think that's what caused the, you know, the loss. It's, I mean, nothing against Preston Lounsbury, but he's not who I would put out third. Was he third or second? I think he was third, wasn't he? I think he was second. Okay. Well, but I, either way, like, yeah, he's not one of the... It's nothing against him. No, no. But there's other players that I would... I don't think we've seen Barb's do one. Well, that's it, right? Yeah. Like your, you know, OJ, when he's back, he's probably one of the first ones off the bench. Yeah, it usually goes OJ, LaBelle, uh, Loshing. Or Mercier. Or Mercier is what yeah. they've been doing. So, like, it's, uh, you know, it's it's just been questionable decisions like that that have made these overtimes and, and, and Trudeau, it's just, you know, yeah. there's fans walking out after overtimes for a reason. Yeah, exactly. All right, let's get to some news and notes from, but also. Thanks, Dave McKnight, friend of the show, yes. for the question. We always appreciate that. And if you have a question you want us to answer on the show, DM us, hit us up on Twitter, hit us up on IG. We'll bring the question to the show. Let's get some news and notes from around the queue. News and notes from around the queue. All right, as per uh, Station Nation's tweet, uh, who you'll hear from tomorrow, uh, Canada's World Junior Camp uh, will play a couple exhibition games against U Sports. Uh, this Sunday and Monday, tickets are on sale for that. And by tickets on sale, I mean tickets plus Ticketmaster's exorbitant fees, where it's more than the tickets, but I digress. Um, I mean, if you can't get to actual World Junior Games, this is probably one of the... You're only going to see Canada play twice here in Moncton, so um, it's a good chance to get out and ace to kind of see some of the stars in U Sports because they were guys that were playing in the queue, and it's very good hockey new sports um, playing against hopefuls for for Team Canada, which the roster was announced. Um, I'm just trying to find it here because you'd think I'd have it set up. No one. I'm going to talk about it. Nine QMJHLers at the uh, junior selection camp. Um, William Rousseau of the Ramparts, Tyler Hines, and Evan Noss on the back end from Sherbrooke and Quebec. Bolduc, Dean, Dume, Goche, Kidney, and Wa. From the Ramparts, Olympic, Mooseheads, Ramparts, Titan, and Phoenix. Um, kind of the names you expected to be on there. Um, I thought maybe LaRue would be there because he was back. He's playing healthy, and it is in Halifax. He's ultimately not on the list. Uh, is there a player that's not on the list for you once you're done coughing? Uh, <laughs> this is what I mean when I'm still a little yeah. under the weather, right? Um I was surprised to see the Ramparts goalie, yeah. Rousseau. Uh, that was a bit of a surprise. Um, I think he's. it's more because he's Quebec. Um, what? Well, it's not necess- It's not that. Like, it's because it's it's in a kind of a Quebec. Um, it's, what am I trying to say here? Without getting too political. It's the uh, biggest market in the queue, and you can have a player from the biggest market. And then goal. Yeah. <clears throat> Something like that. I don't know where I was going with it. <laughs> Sorry. Um, yeah, LaRue was a bit of a surprise, but again, he was hurt most of the year because, um, you know, obviously it's he only had a few games to, to showcase. Um, so <coughs> This might be a long episode. Um, <laughs> another name that... Um, I've seen people talk about, and I don't know what the Canadian Hockey League or Hockey Canada have against them, but I'm wearing a Barry Colts hoodie for a reason, Oh, and that is defenseman Brent Clark, yeah. who was shafted last year and shafted again this year. Uh, you can't find very many me offensively minded mobile right shot defenseman like Brant Clark. Uh, so for me, it was a bit of a surprise that he was, you know, I don't talk about the OHL very often, but when you do, it's Barry. 
<laughs> that is true. Um, so I was a little, you know, surprised by that. Is he playing in Barry right now? Uh, as far as I know. He's up yeah. in the NHL. Oh, is he? Okay. My bad. That might be why. <laughs> okay. Well, I thought he was whatever. See? I'm under the weather, so I'm not as on the ball. <laughs> Uh, but I thought maybe they'd loan him out. They'd loan him out. Yeah. Um, but um, I guess not. Uh, uh, obviously, some people will make the argument for Logan Mayu, but I think we can all agree why he was not invited. Yeah. Uh, there's you know some other players on there that um, that deserve it. Jordan Dume, you know, probably at the start of the year he wasn't even on the list, but. The fact that he's averaging almost three points a game. <laughs> he basically made it so he was going he to be made, on that he team. He made his case. Yeah. Uh, he is apparently injured right now. And I don't. that's what I just read on the board. Someone saying he's out long term. I hope he's not out long term. No. Uh, because that would be devastating. Uh, just considering how hot of a start he's, you know, he's off to. But there's always going to be surprises and... and surprising additions and surprising subtractions that uh, on these lists and you know i couldn't take a piece of paper and write down 29 names right now because i just don't follow the ohl and the whl very much yeah but uh i i when i looked at the roster you know it doesn't shine gold medal to me uh it's it's a good roster I just don't think it's it's going to be a gold medal team. Yeah, I mean, and that's part of the thing when you follow a league. Um, like, we follow all the Quebec teams here doing this, and there's the fans that aren't doing sh- podcast stuff that follow the league intently, whether it's in the OHL, the WHL, and you kind of know your guys, but you don't really know the other guys until the tournament comes. Um, I do know of, you know, Brennan Othman uh, and Peter Burley was in Flint last year. Uh, Logan Stankoven who, from Kamloops, who uh, is one of Bedard's best friends. Um, he's on a, a heater, Reed Schaefer, the Oilers draft pick back in Seattle, doing um, things for them. I'm not sure on the defensive, like the defense core. Um, I don't think it's as good as the defense core as it was last year. And when you don't have a, a Logan or a Owen Power uh, on your decor, that's that's going to be a bit tough. But again, I don't know the other guys. And goaltending, I don't even think. I know Milic from Seattle is playing pretty well. Um, I think they're in tough. They're they're in tough. I mean, Connor Bedard is Connor Bedard, mm-hmm. and it was the same with you know McDavid and Tavares and those guys. That when he's on a roster, you've got a pretty good shot at the World Juniors. So yeah. it's a tournament that you know is always fun to watch, and it'll be interesting to see. And if you want to see the next wave before they go to to um, to Halifax, you can get your tickets for the game. Sunday and Monday to see some of these. I doubt Connor Bedard is going to play in these two exhibition games, um, but he will probably play in the actual double IHF exhibition games um, against Switzerland and I think Latvia. I believe that is true. I believe that yeah. is true. Yeah. So um, some other news, the hall of fame was announced three names um, to that class. Dave Azard, Stefan Richet and Ala- Alain Vigneault were named to, uh, the Hall of Fame class, the uh, team of the month. There's a lot of stuff I should have just had ready. The team of the month, uh, it was all Victoria players, I think, right? Yeah. <laughs> like This is, I'll already let you know, I don't have a team yeah. of the week because I paid no attention yeah, yeah. to hockey. I was too busy sleeping and, and, and resting. Dying so and... it's, this is probably one of the more unprepared shows we will have in yeah. Wildcast podcast history. <laughs> yeah. Um, so if you're, yeah, if you're watching on YouTube, you can see me flipping through my mouse yeah, here. Um, Alexander, I have no notes. Yeah, Alexander Doucette from Valdor, three games, five goals, two assists. Xavier Fortin from Bay Como, three games, three goals, three assists. Joshua Waugh, uh, three goals, four assists. Jake Furlong for the Mooseheads, no goals, three assists. That ringing you here is Jeremy's hat. Uh, we each have an elf hat. If you're watching on YouTube, um, it is not for. Oh, hang on. Uh, three games. No goals, three assists, uh, plus eight for Furlong. The Slavid Komarov. This seemed right, eh? The Quebec guy. Vyacheslav Komarov? <laughs> I guess so. And that's one of those. Uh, three games, one goal, three assists, and uh, player of the week and goaltender of the week. 
Uh, Nathan Jarbo from Victoriaville, 2 0, 963 at 1.49. We didn't get to see him here. Uh, we'll get to who we did get to see here in a little bit. Um, some other news closer to home. Uh, both ring the tie bell, Jonas mm. Tiebell, and Miles Mueller named to uh, Team Switzerland's roster, uh, training camp roster for the World Juniors. Again, I think Tybell was there. I mean, both guys deserve to be there. Um, they've had good starts. Tybell was on the team last year, so I think he's got a little bit of a leg up on Miles. Um, but like we said, I don't know, about a month or so ago when we kind of thought who could potentially be there, I think Miles has done a very good job um, kind of equating himself on the PK. So both those guys uh, do have a shot to to make the uh, to make Switzerland's roster, and that that's a group that will be here at the Avenir Center um, as part of Group B, and the team of the month. I'm just one more getting there. It is team of the month. A couple of Victoria players. All right, here we go. Forward Jordan Dume. No shock. 13 games, seven goals, 20 assists, 27 points. Um, Alexander Dusat was honorable mention, as I mentioned before. Victoriaville Tigra Pierre Olivier Wah from the. Uh, Tigra, 11 goals, 14 assists, no points. He was on your team of the week last week for that exact stat. Tristan Leno from Gatineau, 11 games, 15 points. Goalie of the month, Nathan Darvo, 8-1-0-1 oh, with a 1.53 goals against average, 960 save percentage, and a shutout. And the honorable mention was uh, Samuel St. Hilaire from Sherbrooke, 6-1-1. One, one. Oh, rookie of the month, Samuel St. Hilaire, 6-1-1, uh, 1.46 one, one, goals against average, and Olivier Oud. From Cape Breton, 13 games, 16 points was your honorable mention for the team of the month. I think I nailed everything. Now we're going to talk about our team. Weekly Rewind. One thing you forgot to mention was the uh, educational players of the month for each team. I couldn't find it. Because yep. I... Nerds. Nerds. Who was it? Vince Dillion. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. I was like, oh, as soon as you said it, I was like, oh, yeah, I did forget that. Um, if it does sound like we're rushing, we're not rushing. This is just one of the episodes we're unprepared when we're both uh, bedridden with uh, three or four days of sickness. But, hey, we got two shows this week for you, so we did the best uh, did the best we could this month. Um, the Wildcats go 0-1-1 and on the weekend, losing to the Eagles again. Um, and Victoriaville. In a shootout, bringing the record to 12, 11, 0, and 2 for 26 points. Still second in the Maritimes, but now fifth in the conference. Uh, Friday, a 4-2 loss to the Eagles. I watched it on TV. Um, they played well for the most part. They just ran into a, a hot goalie in Ruccia. He played really well for them. Um, I think we had two or three early breakaways, one on the penalty kill by Barbashev. Uh, they fought in the third. Preston Lounsbury had one of them surprising just in the right spot in the right time, got the thing to three, two, couldn't find the next one uh, to tie it up, but it kind of felt like all the momentum for Friday and look, no Baudouin, no OJ, no Loshing, no Mercier, no Grenier in that one. Um, it was really going to be tough to build on the momentum, uh, but it just didn't feel like they really built off that Sunday character winning momentum. They had 40 shots, uh, but Rucci had just, just got the better of us. Yeah. It was just a case of, you know, he forty he had forty shots on Ruccia. He stopped thirty eight of them. Um, so it was run, running into a hot goalie, um, but really that was more of a junior A lineup. Yeah. When I saw that, when they tweeted out the lineup, I was like, "Oh man, this is going to be tough." Because uh, you you can't. Uh, it's not often you play without. What was it? Five, five regulars. Four, five regulars. Uh, two. <laughs> You know, your top six is basically out a of line. The that's basically a line with yep. Lodemana, OJ, and, and Loshing. So that's tough. And, uh, yeah, so it, it's, it's you know, it's hard to come to come out of a, a game with a win like that. Uh, I thought it, the effort was there. Uh, and, you know, it's nice to see them starting to get that cardiac mentality back again where they're, they're never out of a game and, um, it's, uh, you know, that's, that's the kind of team I want, you know, just stop saving your comebacks for the last, you know, I, I understand that's what cardiac means, is <laughs> you, you know, you're, you, you make your comebacks, you know, late in the games, but 
I mean, it, don't do it so dramatically. Yeah. You know, it's uh, if if you want to win a game, you know, it's uh, you can be down three nothing after the first period. It's the worst lead in hockey, and then you just you pick away at it. But this team is just, you know, that Halifax game was, you know, you're not going to see that all the time. You're not going to see it. You know, that was that was a one off for the for the Mooseheads, and this one here was when they got that first goal. You're like, okay, you know, I think they'll probably get another one here, and they did. Like, you know, what next sh- shift or something next, like yeah, that? Yeah, thirty seconds later, and then you're like, okay, let's 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 get put it to them, put it to them, put it to them, and then you kind of have a sense they, you know, it was. Um, if it wasn't for that empty net goal, they probably, I think they probably would have got it, you know, because they were they were pushing for it, they were getting some chances, and uh, you know it was just an unfortunate break that led to that uh, empty net goal, and you know Moran was almost almost caught up, but you know I think if he would have dove for the puck and you know got puck, it could have you know saved the game, but I'm not sure why he didn't die for it, to be honest. I don't want to take a penalty or... Well, he probably didn't want to take a penalty or if he dives and gets it. I don't know if there was anybody else behind him, around him yeah. to get that. Um, I mean, they scored... Yeah, they got... Darcy got on the board at 14.50. If he scores at 11.50 and then they score 30 seconds later and they have an extra five minutes, mm-hmm. I think they probably do tie that game. Um, at some point, yeah, you've got to... Like, Cardiac Cats is cool for six games a year but not six games in a row all the time because that is just a recipe for um for not getting a lot of wins and it's that was up to three losses or two out of three losses and that's the trend that this team is on right now and they just can't kick that funk and yes they had some guys out of the lineup they got Mercier back for Saturday a 3-2 uh shootout loss to uh Vic um and you talked about it last week when we talked about the Huskies coming in who played a perfect road game, kind of grinded it down. That's exactly what the Wildcats did on Saturday. They played a perfect road game at home, but for 12 seconds. And I talked about this on the postgame show. And I talked to some, I talked to Ken, uh, one of our followers, uh, before the game, and he's like, what do we need to do against Victor with all this firepower and, and this and that? And I said, we have to play a perfect game and win 2-1. Mm-hmm. And we did that except for 12 seconds in the second period. And, I, and I'm going to come out right now. I love Anthony Hamel and everything he's brought to this hockey club. Uh, Vinny LaBelle, everything he continues to do on that top line as a 20-year-old in that club. Um, but I don't know what they were doing in that second period. 12 seconds left. Hamel gets it behind the net. If he stands there and stares up at the clock, if he reverses it, if he eats it behind the net and does nothing... They get out of that second period up to one. They probably win the hockey game. I would almost go on a limb and say they do win the hockey game the way they played in that third period. Um, but he gives it back to LaBelle. It goes off a stick, kind of jumps on it, right out to uh, Prashipov, and it's in the back of the net. It's nothing Steinman can do. And that's just that just encompasses all of this team in November, just the small mistakes. Um that took away from two points. They were they were lucky to stay in this one and not let it deflate them and lose like five to two and just completely die in the third period. They got the extra point. But if Amel and LaBelle don't cough that puck up in the second period, this team gets off the side and beats one of the top beats the number two team in the QMJHL. Yep, I have to agree. Uh, that was just um that was a terrible decision, terrible play. Um, uh, you know, you, you could, like you said, you could eat the puck if you want to. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's just one of those, it's a brain, it was a brain fart. And right? you probably don't see that again from those two players nope. this year. Nope. It, it happens. Yeah. Right? It's, it's, it, there's going to be mistakes. Uh, it, it's just not something you see from, from those two. So it was a little, uh, it was it was uncharacteristic. Let's put it that way. It, that's there's no there's no better way of of putting it really. Yep. It was outside of their uh, of their playing style. Caught me by surprise. It caught a lot of people by surprise. And it was nice that they got a point. Uh, but I will bring up poor Preston Loudsbury. Oh my goodness, <laughs> he must have been having nightmares. I mean, 
inches away in overtime. I still don't know how that puck stayed out. No. Like, aside from hitting the back of Dag's stick, and then when I watched the replay, I think it hit the back of his foot. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't think it hit any post to come back in his foot. I think it hit his stick and then hit his foot and didn't go the other way. just dropped right in front of... Right in front of him to get it. So inches away in overtime, and then his shootout attempt goes through Dag's legs and just sits on the goal line. And, man, poor guy. <laughs> I mean, yeah, that's – I mean, your, your your overtime luck is is something, but to for your shootout attempt to be just as close to going in is – oh, man, I feel bad. But, um, no, it was – I was happy to get a point, but man, they're on a heater. Those those Tig man, holy oh, smokes, geez. they're they're on absolute fire right now. And the Wildcats had what forty shots? Twenty? What do they have? Twenty five? Where are we here? Twenty five shots. I think they must have directed forty five at Dag. Which I am. I said this on the post game. I am so glad we don't have to face that dude for the next four years, seven to eight times a year. Um, like I don't always like to crap on Cape Breton the way you do, but losing pedal last year, not tagging Dag this year, mm-hmm. that might be why you're not. Uh, that may be why you're spinning your tires. But man, that guy, I didn't realize how big he was in the oh, net. Yeah, like he is six, a six two two well, two oh seven. He is a or six four two oh seven. Like he, I didn't realize he was that big. I thought he was like six foot six one. Mm-hmm. You saw him down. Like when I went actually down to get a, a video for. uh Instagram to tag Rio Pell. Um, I just look over. I'm just like, he's huge, but he's quick and he's fast and he's agile. Um, they are set up. You know, you talked about last week. Do you let him take the net for the second half? Yeah, I I think I'm coming around more to the idea of if you can get a goaltender to be the one B with him, um, I, that your future is bright for for Victoriaville. Oh man, yeah, it's. Uh, he's already being touted as, you know, for the NHL draft. I forget, I forget which year he's eligible for. 2024 or something like that. Because he's 16. It's almost 25, I think. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, so it's... <sighs> Kate Breton could have had him. And, I mean, just think, I mean... They would have taken him, and then they find out that Remy Delafontaine wants to play closer to home. Perfect. Yeah. Right. Perfect. Yeah. At that point, they don't need to make the Satiny trade. They've got Ruccia. They've got Dag. They're set. Uh, they can use the asset to get another yep. euro. Like if they wanted to move their euro yep. to get another euro, and yeah, no, it's uh, tough times on. Hockey Island, as they yeah. call themselves, <laughs> even though it's, well, I guess, yeah, it's an yeah. island. Yeah. Uh, but that's, uh, like, that's Victoriaville, man. Like, that's, my concern with Victoriaville is I don't want them to do too much because I want them to be good for the next couple of years. Yeah. So I don't want them to be too aggressive this year. I still don't think they can win this year. Uh, but if they can win this year. I mean, they're set for a very good couple of years. Yeah, I, I think if you can move out of Darvo and get, like you said, a Rousseau or a Brady James that can just play well in a new new building and you just kind of tinker that forward line a little bit. But again, how much do you actually want to do when this team is, I don't know, what, eight wins in a row now? Mm-hmm. Nine. Well, they're on a heater. Let's put it that yeah, way. Yeah, they're on a... I think it's nine games in a row, something like that. Like, how much do you really want to tinker with a lineup that, because chemistry is key, and they are finding, I mean, they they got a good roster on paper. It's not a standout roster on paper, mm-hmm. but they're 11 and one, I don't know, eight, one and one in their last 10. So yeah, they're on an eight, eight game winning streak right now. They're 11 and one at home. I mean, that's in that barn with the way they're going. Yeah. It'd be interesting to see how much they actually kind of tinker moving into into the trade deadline, and hopefully uh, we can have so, like hopefully Cedric can share some insight on what maybe one of the Quebec teams will do. 
That's right. It's going to be nice to have a yeah. Quebec reporter. Yeah, we have It's going to be different. Yeah. I'll have to brush up on my français. <laughs> oh, yeah. We. Oh, oui. <laughs> <laughs> it might, have to, it might <laughs> want to let me introduce the name next week. Got it. Done. <laughs> you're, you're pretty good at introducing. Just Cedric Blondin. Well done. I'm going to piece that part out, and if I don't say it, I'll just put that over top. Um, so you look ahead at the schedule. I mean, injuries are catching up, but Baudouin and Auger uh, could be back this week. Loshing is out till after Christmas. Grenier out as well. I'm not sure how long he's going to be out, but these are three important games, and you're playing Bathurst, you're playing St. John, and you're playing Cape Breton, and if I had told you on October 5th, by the time we get to the second last week of the trade deadline, Bathurst, St. John, and Cape Breton will be a very important three-game stretch with two of them on the road. You would have laughed in my face. Um, but, I mean, this team is fifth in the conference, and all these teams are behind us. These are three winnable games. Hopefully, Baudouin and Auger will definitely change the dynamic in the top six. It'll actually look like a, a top six, but, I mean... Bathurst is one point behind us. Cape Breton is four points behind us. And St. John is more than four points behind us. But St. John and Moncton always is always an, and a little bit of an interesting when we go to St. John, which we could be on maybe a Wildcast podcast roadie down there. We're not quite sure, which uh, could be fun. But this is a very important three-game stretch for this team. Yeah, I mean, right now you're, you know, Five points away from, you know, you're five points out of of the not playoffs. being in the playoffs. Yeah, that's um, you know that's a concern, and I'm sure it's a concern within the team as well, because I'm sure they know that they are a better team. Uh, they just haven't been getting the breaks, and they haven't been getting the production. I think they were expecting. Yeah, but I also think, I also think it comes back to, you know, they. OJ obviously is a big a big loss. Baudouin has been a, has been a big loss. Like that's your that's a leader. That's a character player. Uh, they just I guess it, it it's come down to the goaltending. It's it's you know they they've there's been opportunities for them to win games and they haven't gotten it because they haven't gotten you know some saves that they that they need. Like when you need to make a goalie when a goalie needs to make a save. He needs to make a save. He can't yeah. allow the next puck in. Yeah. Uh, so it's, and I think that's really what their struggle is right now. It's defensively. It's not helping each other out. Uh, I think they're good. The forward group is good. It's their defensive, you know, it's their D. It's this, they need to, they need to work together more. Uh, they just need to, <laughs> they, they need to communicate more is what they need to do. Like it's, there's been times where it's just been an absolute train wreck. There's just to get times, out of their own zone. Yeah, but there's also been times where their breakouts have been, you know, yeah. crystal smooth. Like it's, yeah, it's, it's it's. But more often than not, it seems like the puck goes around the wall and gets stuck on the wall, and then it's got to get reversed, yeah. or there's not enough puck support on the guy coming to help mm-hmm. for a little chip off the wall to get it out easily. It, it seems like it's always a struggle to get it out. They're defending to get it out. Then when they get it out, they're too tired. They chip. They chase. They change, mm-hmm. and back down to the other end, and we're defending again. I know our, our old friend Neil Hodge. He used to, you know, there has been times when he would describe the Wildcats in the past as Jekyll and Hyde. You know, you just wouldn't know what to expect. And this is it's a it's a perfect. That's exactly what the season's been. It, it is. Yeah. You, you know, you just you, you look at the lineup and you're like, okay, this team can beat this team, but then they just go out and lay an egg, or they go out and and press the pants off me. You know, I, I just a little more consistency would be nice going forward. Yeah, they're seven oh seven four oh and one in the division. They got six division games. They can get to ten and four. I mean, you're looking if you win five of these next six in your division, Richie's job becomes a little easier at the trade deadline. Mm-hmm. But I ask you two things. One, what is this team's identity right now? And two, are you looking to upgrade or move in the net? Come trade bet. Now we're going to get to the Wildcats trade period show uh, on the uh, 21st. But you can hold off to that question if you want. But, uh, I mean, you talk about goaltending, and it's been Jekyll and Hyde for most – with both guys, um, one more than other since 
November since the calendar changed November, but what is this team's identity and are you looking at goaltending? I don't think they have an identity right now. I think they're still searching for it. Yeah. Um, it's this team should be a lot better than than what they are. Uh, so it's they need to they they need to first of all they need to be more I guess productive in the first forty minutes of 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 the games. It's it's you're we're seeing games where there's no effort in the first period. There's no effort in the second period. And then it's like, oh, the third period comes around and they're so all of a sudden they realize the game has started. Yeah. That's and that's that's something I would have expected from the team maybe last year. Uh but this is a little different. Like this is a more experienced group. Because once they get that goal, mm-hmm. then they kind of continue. That's it, right? They, they continue to roll. And maybe the, part of it is Baudouin being out. Because remember, he's well, that's, the guy that's yeah. – he kind of stems that shit. But, yeah. I, once Lady Mo yeah. gets on their side, yeah. they, they can get the job done. But Lady Mo needs to be with them at 7 o'clock. Yeah. Not – 8.45. 8, exactly. Right? It's It's – that's their problem right now. It's the the starts are too late. They need to be. Uh, there needs to be more energy at puck drop than there than there has been. So I think they're that that's what their focus needs to be on. When it comes to goaltending, I think it's too early to move on from one of them. Yeah. Um, because I think, you know, we look at it. We traded Charles Antoine Lavoie for a reason because we needed more draft picks to go all in yep. during the COVID year. And that's why he was traded. They saw that, that the, them being able they to. They recognize that need, yeah. Right? And what did you see from him? He progressively got better, right? He was. He ended up being a President Cup champion. Yeah. Right? Goalie of the year. Yeah. So, Last year. It seems like when they when they they draft you know okay they they didn't draft Philly huh, but they you know they acquired him at a young age. They're getting the right goalies in their system. They're just not developing them right, and they're giving up on them too soon. And I think this is a case of if they do in fact move on from Philly, huh, it might come back and bite them in the ass. It's. You can tell he's got that potential. Maybe mm-hmm. he's just, you know, he's not a late bloomer. He's a late developer. And I think, you know, if he's still around next year, I think I said this two years ago, <laughs> I think he's going to be the guy. But, you know, I've been saying that for two years, for now. two years, right? And that's where I'm kind of on the fence about it, where I think it will be a mistake to trade him. But I also think you could take advantage of whatever value he has right now to, you know, make the move. And that's exactly where I'm at because, and I'm glad you brought up Lavalet because if you give, they haven't had a track record of letting goaltenders play to lose hockey games when they're young. And that's what you need to do with goaltenders in, in major juniors. When you're not supposed to be good, let the 16-year-old take a ton of rubber. Mm-hmm. And and I and I get there's a point of letting them learn behind 20-year-olds, and that's great in year one with uh, run DLC. Mm-hmm. But last year, and I understand you had to make the move because you acquired um, Dow back, so all of a sudden – there was that opening. I don't. I don't think if Dow didn't come back, I don't think we would have grabbed Lemieux. It would have been Couture and mm-hmm. Philly on, and it might have been Couture and Philly on this year as the tandem. But I think there is some value to where he was drafted. A couple of years, his name value, but I I can't give up on him yet because he's. We've seen flashes in October, and it's there. It's just. And like I said, maybe he's not a, 
a 48 start guy. Maybe he's a 1A, 1B like Victoriaville had with Herdebees and Darvo, and she went again one with last year with um, Lavalet and Colomb. Mm-hmm. Like, I, there's part of me that keeps looking at these 20 year old goaltenders, and I'm like, are we gonna, you know, if we go five, four and two in this stretch, are they gonna pull the trigger on Colomb and bring in a 20 year old when they move out a 20 year old because they want to win in the second half? Like, there's a part of me that's hoping that doesn't happen. And we run with Philion and Steinman and get a goalie group room that grows together. They're the same age, I believe, right? Yes. Yeah, they're the same age. Let them grow together. Have a two-person tandem. And when you get to next year and into the trade deadline and one of them's, you know, you keep them both and see what happens before the draft of their 20-year-old year. But mm-hmm. keep them together. And I think that's what it is with, with Philion is he needs that confidence from the organization like hey we're keeping you you're not moving you don't have to worry about this you don't have to worry about that just focus on playing hockey and i know Steinman's playing well great when you get the net it's your net take it like I, I, you can't give up on them and that's what i worry is if this team starts to win and there's a lot of these 20 year olds out there i really hope that it's not the past two years where we brought in a 20 year old even at the expense of Philly on where it's Steinman and Cologne, right? Like, mm-hmm. yes, that looks like a really good group on paper or Herdebees and, and Steinman or whatever. I just don't want it to be at the expense of, of Philly on where when we get into a playoff and we get into that final four, guess who the guy we're facing is, is the guy we gave up on and he beats us in seven because that would be a Moncton thing. Be a very Moncton thing. <laughs> I, I don't think – Trading a goalie would be their main focus right now. No, I don't think so either. I think it's more, I think they want a forward who can contribute in the top six for the second half of the season and then also next season. And I also think they're probably looking for another defenseman. But if they're looking for another defenseman, that's going to get nine on the roster. So there's going to be, they're going to need to move two of them out. Right? So who are you moving out then? I think. Thomas Darcy has a good. Thomas Darcy has some has a good value, value right now. And and I mean, you can't really move. I no, I you I don't. don't I w- I wouldn't because I think he's your your number four guy when you've got John. And we get, we're going to get into this in two weeks, so this is just Valentine needs to play. Yeah, I know. That's what I mean. So you need to play. He had his forward experience, his experiment, fine. But he needs to Which play. I did not. I was like, why isn't Darcy playing forward? He's playing forward before. Trent um, Ballantyne needs to play. Let's put yeah, it that way. Yeah. That's, that's, yeah. he can't be, you know, eating popcorn every night. No, it's not going to be Forche. You're not moving on that. Nope. You're not moving on Grenier because you added him as a first round pick. Nope. You're not moving on Moran because that's nope. your, that's your three of four. Mm-hmm. And I ascends it would complete that top four. Nope. So. You're not moving Marcel this year because, well, he's playing really good with Moran and he's been an excellent free agent find, which mm-hmm. you don't always get. Mm-hmm. I guess Darcy and maybe Hamel. Mm-hmm. But if you move out Hamel, that worries me for bringing in a 20 year old goaltender. Yep. <laughs> right? So, no, it's it's good, uh, good points. It's going to be interesting. If there's, I mean,. You know, we talk about Charlottetown and St. John being active. I mean, Richie could be one of the more active GMs. Yeah, right? like, and I've said to many people, I don't think we will be active. But when you look, it depends how this six game goes against Bathurst, St. John, Cape, Halifax, Bathurst, Bathurst. Mm-hmm. And I, I mean, I want to see three and three from the goaltenders. Yeah, like I, one, 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 one. I don't care. I, I mean. Simon hasn't played great against Halifax in both games, but we ended up winning that that third one, and he didn't play great in the first one. I think Philion played in the very first one. I don't even care. Just I don't even go off past records. Just all right. Philion played against uh, or Simon played against Victoriaville. Philion starts against Bathurst, and on and on and on, three and three, and see how this thing rolls out. And just if you have to do that, I'm okay with that. Mm-hmm. Just because. The problem with Philion is, and this would happen with Lavalet. This isn't going to happen with Steinman, I don't think. But Leclerc played what, twenty-seven straight games, something like that. 
where we started the free Lavalier hashtag. Mm-hmm. Well, if you get Steinman going for five of the next six, well, now Fillion hasn't played for almost a month. Yeah. How does that help his development? Because he's going to get into one game, give up a goal, and everyone's going to go, well, what are we doing with this kid? Right? So I, I think it's got to be one, 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 one. No, I know. I agree. It's, it's, I mean, if you're, if you win, I think you get, I think you earn the next game. That's my only thing. Like and, you're, yeah. You know, if you win, you should be in. That's, that's point final in French, which means period. <laughs> um, you know, it's, it's, that for me is, should be no questions asked. If you get, if you get a win, you get the next start. That would be my approach as a coach. That's that's it. So if we, if you know if we go into, you know if we go we get Bathurst in town on 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 Thursday, and Steinman starts, and he wins, and he wins. You throw him back out there in St. John Friday night, and he wins. Well, you and it, he wins. You, you gotta and he you wins. gotta ride. And, and you gotta ride the hot the hot stick. Right, and then we're into he's. We go six and zero. We're loving this show. We're six and zero. We're up in the division. And now Philly hasn't played in a month. I'm so sorry. well, maybe Philly starts on exactly. Thursday, right? Yeah, and yeah, yeah, yeah. And I have nothing wrong with that because if Philly starts on Thursday and he wins, he starts Friday and he wins. There's your confidence. There's your confidence. Yeah, yeah, that's two games in a row. And tell me the last time he's won two games in a row. October. Okay. <laughs> That, like, I, thought, I thought it was longer than that, but I don't think so. That's where I'm going at right now. It's when I and that I'm okay with because Philion's playing. It's the if Steinman gets five in a row and Philion gets one, mm-hmm. then you're on his confidence train. I was right about him though. I said you got to let Philion Simon play and let Philion watch a couple games, and that's exactly what they did. Yep. And Philion came back that next game and played really well. Right. So sometimes a break. Giving a goalie a break isn't necessarily a bad thing. Yep, the last two times he went two in a row was Valdor, uh, October twentieth, and St. John, the twenty second. Okay, so I thought it was longer than that. Yeah, but sometimes giving a goalie a break isn't a bad thing. Yeah, yeah. that's and I don't mind your if <laughs> I don't mind it if I guess I don't mind it if it's Philly on and he continues to play. It worries me if he hasn't played since. The Halifax, or when was his last start? Red Miranda? Filio? He started a couple days ago. Yeah, yeah, okay. So it was Valdor before that, the 19th. So that, okay. That's, all right. Yeah, no, and we're going to get into it. We're going to hopefully get, uh, we're going to hopefully get Mr. Richie on the show before the deadline, but he's more, we usually get him on after. He's usually the guest on the uh, Welcome Back show. So we are trying to find a media member, and I've got one in mind uh, for our Moncton show. So perfect, yeah, cool. That that's that's when we'll really get into some heated debates. But uh, are you ready for everyone's favorite part of the show? Yes, please. Alrighty. The stick tap of the week, sponsored by. Oh my god, I'm sweating. Eric Murray, realtor, buy a house from him. Stick tap of the week. Okay. <laughs> uh, so for this one, um, we are going out to the WHL. Oh, um, we are going to the Brandon Wheat Kings. Uh, so story here is um, so some of the, the team were doing some uh, community work uh, last Tuesday. Um, Calder Anderson, Nolan Ritchie, uh, Jake Chason and, and Ben Thornton. And um, I guess following their their charity work, because, uh, of course, Calder Anderson and uh, Nolan Ritchie are from Brandon. They decided to go for a little drive with Mr. Chason and Mr. Thornton to show them around the city. Um, Beautiful city. I've never been there. I I was there in the dark when we drove out here. Okay. So I got there like 10 p.m., drove through, got gas, headed to Winnipeg. So I really don't know, but I just assume it's a beautiful city. Uh, So they were driving around, and, um, you know, they spotted a man. Uh, He was, you know, just standing next to a a light pole um, on on a bridge. And, you know, one of the guys kind of said that it looked a little strange. So they, you know, they turned around and, um, you know, they, you know, did a little U-turn and, you know, they talked to this gentleman, asked him, you know, how are things going? And, 
he basically said that, um, you know, he was having some thoughts and, um, they asked if, you know, if he needed some help and, and he agreed. So, um, you know, these, these four players from, you know, the Brandon Weekings were basically able to deescalate a suicide attempt, Wow. which I think was, yeah, it's, it's incredible. Cause that's not, it's not something that as junior hockey players, you're trained to do mm-hmm. right. You're, you're, you're trained to work out in the gym. You go through media training, you go through social media training, you go through, you know, uh, sexual harassment, sexual assault training, but you never go through suicide de-escalation. Suicide prevention, yeah. Right? And it's... Wow. Um, just to... I mean, they just literally talk this guy down from, um, you know, from doing, you know, the uh, a, a terrible thing. And, uh, you know, it's it's not something that they're... I mean, it's been in the news, but I think they really need to be... Commanded. I guess, yeah, recognized a little more um, for for their actions. So um, when I um, when I heard this story, I thought it was a, a perfect a perfect stick tap to the week. And so I don't think I've ever done you know gone out to the WHL. So this one's uh, this one's a first. So uh, I don't know how we're going to tag this one, but I'm sure we can just well, uh, I'll figure it out. We'll throw the Brandon <laughs> Wee Kings out there, but uh, awesome! I mean, amazing job. You know, it's. Um, your adrenaline can pump in a hockey game, but uh, man, that's uh, that's got to be some a different level of adrenaline. You got to think, right? It's yeah. That's um, you know your your life's probably at your life probably stops, right? If you're yeah. if you're dealing with something like that, and you want to make sure that you're you're saying the right things and. You know, being that voice, voice that that comfort um, to to make sure that it's not escalated to to the next level. And um, no, I'm just uh, just incredible. Uh, so shout out to those five guy, uh, four guys, and you know maybe that's something else that you know it's. You never know when that's when you're going to be put in that place, and you know they handle it, mm-hmm. they handle it like like pros, man. Like that's when I heard that story, I was like, damn, you know, like I wouldn't, I wouldn't know what to do. I wouldn't know? know what to say. I wouldn't know what to say either. You I'd know? be it's, almost. It's. It, it, I'd probably freeze, you know, and it's that's probably the worst thing. You you don't yeah. want to freeze in a moment like that, you know. You want to, you want to help and be there and and make sure that it's that you resolve it you know soon because sooner rather than later yeah, yeah right it's um so i just un unbelievable job and uh i i couldn't there were some other things that i thought about but uh you know i thought this one was uh this one this one was easy yeah i i mean that at 16 17 to have the wherewithal a when you drive around your buddies <laughs> listening to tunes talking about the latest TikTok or whatever you're not really paying attention to what's going around you mm-hmm. so the wherewithal for that and then i don't even know i'd be scared to talk to the guy because if it if i don't say the right things mm-hmm. then i'm in treatment for yeah talking about that right mm-hmm. so good on those uh good on those kids um for all the bad the junior hockey has had from yeah Hockey Canada, that is an excellent uh, stick tap to reward guys that just aren't getting enough recognition. The stick tap of the week, sponsored by Eric Murray Real Estate with the Remax Avante team. If you're looking to buy or sell a home in the greater Moncton or surrounding area, make sure to check him out on social media or give him a call at 506 863 8802. All right, and that brings us to the Wildcast Wildcat of the Week, presented by Rosemary Lynn Massage and Spa. Um, right now it's that time of year again. You're thinking of gifts for your ladies. They're going to need some away from you time before Christmas gets here and away from the kids time. Um, she's got you covered with, uh, with Christmas specials. You can get a manicure, save $16 off. It's $30 now. You can get gel or acrylic nails, 
save 10 to 20 bucks, $55, or you can get a pedicure, save $15. They are now $40 to call to get any of those phone 506-830-1224 or visit them at 1224 Mountain Road. Uh, your Wildcast Wildcat of the Week uh, honorable mention goes to Gabe Smith. Um, he's so freaking... I never get what I want. <laughs> he's so... <laughs> <laughs> he's so freaking close man like it's just he is it's you know it's coming and you're just like oh my god <laughs> from the, the start of the year and just in terms of his skating development it almost seemed like a different player yeah and it seemed like in the start of the year he he maybe grew those extra inches just before the draft so he wasn't quite on the ice but now he's kind of growing into his body skating better um he's being a force down low he's getting a little bit tougher in front of the net it is coming i hope it's it won of the two games before Christmas because like Phil Dau, remember he scored just before Christmas, the he last did. game before Christmas, mm-hmm. and the puck just started to go in the net in the second half. This could be a player um, just like that. Uh, but the Wildcats of the Wildcat of the week, uh, he came back uh, a couple weeks ago, uh, got his first goal of the year against Cape Breton, kind of got things going for us um, with a nice nice clapper top shelf and then uh, had an assist against Victoriaville. Um, he's kind of been a stabilizing player he's been playing with um forte john draw um on the i want to say third pair playing second power play minutes um just it was good to have him back after being out from the knee um his you know he's getting more comfortable out there i I wouldn't say he was timid in his first couple games but he's getting more comfortable out there he's getting a little bit more ice time um and it was good to see him get that first goal kind of get us back into that thing uh against cape breton and that is number seven Thomas Darcy is your Wildcast Wildcat of the week. Well, that kind of does it for this week, kind of. Uh, Join us tomorrow as we kick off our annual trade deadline shows. Uh, We talk to media members from around the Maritime Division about the plans for the Q trading period. Uh, This week, we've got Corey Arsenault, color voice of the Islanders, get his thoughts on that rebuild Uh, as well. We'll see if we can track down Jamie Tozer from Station Nation uh, to talk about the Sea Dogs rebuild and... See if we can get some tips and tricks for you guys for flights over the holidays. Because if there's a guy that knows what he's doing through airports, because I hate airports, that would be the guy uh, to do it. Um, just before we get out of here, the U Sports team was uh, announced. Uh, we talked about it in the um, news and notes from around the league. So Matt Welsh, uh, obviously who we know very well, uh, will be one of the goaltenders. Adam McCormick. Um, locally, though, Mika Sear is named to the team. Uh, will not play. Uh, as he is injured, and Jacob Hudson of St. FX is on that team. So they're giving us a reason to pay the money for the tickets. <laughs> um, so, again, it's Sunday and Monday if you want to go down and uh, support those guys and see Team Canada because you're not going to get to see them uh, a whole lot for the actual tournament. But other than that, you guys have an excellent week. Join us again tomorrow for our annual trade deadline show, and we will be back next week with two episodes. Have a good weekend. Thanks for listening to another episode of the Wildcast Podcast. Follow us on social media at Moncton Wildcast.